So today we are going to learn about the preliminary functions test interpretation, how to approach them stepwise, uh, like how to like differentiate between the obstructive lung disease versus restrictive lung diseases, and then how to like further delineate like which one is which. Okay, so an easy way to remember this is via this 70, 80, and 90 rule. So you will never forget it. So what is the first step, guys, that we do in any patient who has either obstructive or restrictive lung disease is the FVV1 that is forced expiratory volume in first second over forced vital capacity. The number here is 70 as per our rule. So that is the cutoff. If the FVV1 over FVC ratio is less than 70, then it is likely obstruction. And it can be any kind of obstruction. It can be reversible obstruction. It can be irreversible obstruction. So on the other hand, if the patient has the ratio more than 70, then there is no obstruction. But we cannot say for sure that this patient has restrictive lung disease. We have few more steps to cover to like mark the patient as having restrictive lung disease. So on this side of the board, if we see the patient has this less than 70 ratio, then the next step is to check in the reversibility of FEV1 with the bronchodilator challenge that is usually albuterol, how much the FEV1 should increase if we want to say this is a reversible, it should be 12% and the volume that should increase should be 200 ml. If that happens, it's asthma. Otherwise, if less than that, less than 12% or less than 200 ml, this is likely irreversible airway disease, irre irreversible obstruction, likely COPD or emphysema. And we also have to check FEV1 over here to look for the severity of obstruction. How severe is that airway obstruction? So to make it easy, I'm drawing a line and there are some cutoff points. The first one is 80, second one is 50, and then third one is 30. So if FEV1, the baseline FEV1 is more than 80%, is likely mild obstruction. If it's between 50 to 80 is moderate, between 30 to 49 is severe, but less than 30 is very severe obstruction, guys. Okay, so this was our obstructive lung diseases. Okay, so on the other hand, if the ratio is more than 70, what is the next step that we have to do is to check FVC. We were checking FVV1 on the obstructive side. On this side, we are checking FVC alone, the percentage. As per our rule, the number here will be 80. That is the cutoff. As you guys know, the restrictive lung disease, they usually don't retain volume in the lungs. So, However, on the obstructive lung disease, those guys retain volumes. So if the ratio of F, if the percentage of FVC is more than 80% of predicted, it rules out any restrictive lung disease. This is not a restrictive lung disease. However, if the patient has forced vital capacity less than 80% of predicted, then this guy has possible restriction. We cannot like say for sure that this guy has the restrictive lung disease, definitely. We have one more step to go. And what that step can be, what that number can be, that is total lung capacity or TLC. So as per rule, the number here will be 90. So you see here, guys, this 70, 80, 
and 90 ru so that's how you remember the numbers so same principle applies to total lung capacity as the patient if the patient has a restrictive lung disease they don't tend to retain the volumes if they are retaining volumes it rules out the restrictive lung diseases so if the number is less than 90% it's likely this patient has restrictive lung disease Okay, on the other hand, if the patient has total lung capacity more than 90%, it means the patient is retaining volume. It cannot be restriction. It rules out restrictive lung disease. Simple as that. Do you guys finish over here or do you guys have any, any other step to perform over here? So for sure, to like differentiate between the extrapulmonary and intrapulmonary restrictive lung diseases, we have to perform diffusion lung capacity of carbon monoxide. So, if the patient has normal diffusion lung capacity, it means it's not from, coming from the lungs, it's likely extra pulmonary restrictive lung disease like kyphoscoliosis, sometimes myasthenia or other neuromuscular disorders can do that. However, if the patient has low diffusion lung capacity of carbon monoxide, less than 50%, this patient most likely has intrapulmonary restrictive lung disease. Okay, so this was a simple algorithm to look, to go through the pulmonary function test. Now we'll go through a few of the pulmonary function testing, spirometry, so we'll go stepwise over stepwise approach. So what is the first thing we do is to check FVV1 over FVC. And we'll see if the ratio is less than 70% or it's more than 70%. So what do you guys see? Okay, so the ratio is more than 70%. So this, so we can say this patient does not have any obstruction. So what is the next step? we have to do in these patients is to check FVC in these patients. So now the formula is like 80. So this is less than 80%. So this patient has possible restriction. If this number was more than 80%, that would have ruled out the restriction and we wouldn't have gone further in this patient. So this is our second step. But we have to go another step. Third step is to check for the total lung capacity of the patient. And the number here is 90%. This patient has 71% of total lung capacity. So this patient is not retaining any air. So this patient for sure has restrictive lung disease. So then we can like see whether this patient has extra pulmonary or intrapulmonary. So if the ratio is more than uh, is more than 50%, this 68, that so this patient likely has extra pulmonary restrictive lung disease. Because in intrapulmonary restrictive lung disease, this should have been less than 50%. So we'll go through the next parametry. We'll, we'll go through the same steps. So the first step that we have to see is like to check the FEV1 over FVC ratio. Here again, it's more than 70%. So guys, this is not an obstructive lung disease and the next step we have to check is FVC is 56 percent is again less than 80 percent guys so this likely has restriction or restrictive lung disease so we have to go to our third step that is to check total lung capacity on here you go that is less than 90 percent so this means this guy or this lady has for sure restrictive lung disease and then now we have to check for the diffusion lung capacity so diffusion lung capacity here is less than 50 percent so this patient has intrapulmonary restrictive lung disease okay so we'll go to the third 
spectrometry. So we'll go with the same steps. So the first thing is FEV1 over FEC ratio. The ratio here is 58%. So this is less than 70. This is obstruction, guys. So if the patient has FEV1 over FVC, here we check for the FEV1. That is the second step here. So you see the number 58. So to look for the severity, in what category does it come? That is a moderate obstruction over here. And if you look at the reversibility with the bronchodilator, it was 58%, now it's 59%. So there is only 1% difference, it's less than 12%. So this is an irreversible. And just for the sake, you if you look at the total lung capacity, it's more than 90%. It's likely represents air trapping in the sky. And if we have to check at the fuel lung capacity of carbon monoxide, it again is slow. It again goes with COPD because asthma patients usually have normal DLCO. So that was a short video regarding how to go in stepwise approach in if we have to interpret this parameter or pulmonary functions testing to make things easier for you. If you have any questions, please in the comment section.